Welcome to this edition of Able to Cook, the one and only program that focuses on many abilities, despite your disabilities, in the kitchen. Uh, and this is for people who, this show, we haven't done this show, uh, 2019 uh, was the last one, 2020. Um, but uh, we are going to be continuing uh, these uh, topics on um, food safety and history and um, show uh, simple recipes for people who should not be scared of the kitchen. Uh, my name is, uh, um, I am, I'm Lauren Seiler. My wife Arlene is not here today. Um, on this um, food safety edition of, of um, Able to Cook uh, 2023, we will focus on uh, preparing your holiday turkey safely and um, storing it and uh, just safety in the kitchen uh, when it comes to uh, keeping raw and cooked food uh, safely so no one gets sick, no one gets poisoned, uh, and uh, well, poison is sick, or, or, and no one uh, gets um hurt especially in the kitchen um, and with that uh, let's turn to uh, first to um, these examples here before I get to our website uh, when you are uh, going to cut raw material or raw uh, um, shall we say raw poultry and then, uh, uh, and you're using a cutting board. Uh, we don't have a cutting board here right now, but uh, for aesthetics and for television, I'm going uh, to prove a point. This is a um, microwavable dish, and in this microwavable dish, it is separated. So um, just pretend for television that this is two cutting boards. Normally in a kitchen, you have um, a cutting board. Nowadays, um, you have uh, cutting boards for, um, so green represents vegetables. Uh, yellow represents uh, um, poultry. Red represents meat. And green, you know, like I said, green or orange represents vegetables. Um, so, but um, I've taken culinary courses in the past. Um, it is against food safety rule to have raw meat and cooked meat or raw poultry and cooked poultry on the same uh, on the same cutting board. So you must separate your uh, product and also if you're going to have a salad on one side let's say you're using this to give somebody a meal uh, use a salad on one side and then they cook meat or something on the other so this is an example of that and then but what you don't want to do is mix um, raw meat and cooked food in the same. Um, it's one thing to put rice in something like this or soup in something like this, but you don't want to put raw meat and cooked meat in the same um, thing. So it's best to get something separated like this, okay? So uh, separated meaning it has a divider, and uh, if you can see that, so um, it has a divider so you can put your salad and your uh, cooked stuff there or whatever you want to put there. And you can usually buy these in the store um, in a package for like $7 or something like that. But, and they're very, or they're very inexpensive. Um, I do not recommend you getting anything in the dollar store or anything cheap like this uh, and what you don't want to do is microwave it too long because uh, it could melt 
Um, and you don't want to put one thing that you should not do uh, when you are microwaving uh, anything or leftovers. Um, um, I don't have an example here, um, but for example, if this was this is a uh, uh, a vegetable peeler, but if you had a fork, do not put a fork in the microwave, or do not put do not put any um, um, metal, anything metal. Um, do not put anything metal in the microwave, and um, for for safety purposes. Um, if you are uh, making something um, for the holidays in uh, a metal tin, such as a turkey, such as a lasagna, you know, uh, a, a she, it's called a um, throwaway, it's like um, one of those throwaway pans, okay? Um, don't put a pan of, of metal or anything metal in a microwave. It is not... Uh, you, it can cause fire uh, and things like that. And holiday breakfasts, um, I do not recommend um, uh, for safety purposes. Don't cook bacon in the microwave, r raw bacon in the microwave. It splatters, uh, it causes fires, so on and so forth. Um, um, as a matter of fact, before we get to um, more holiday safety, um, I do not recommend you frying your turkey in a fryer outside. Um, there's been many um, videos on YouTube about people getting hurt uh, when it comes to frying a turkey outside and it, it really explodes. So let's uh, take a look at one of those videos. This is not meant to be funny. It seems funny. It seems comical. But word of caution, um, I suggest that you ask someone if you're going to barbecue. Uh, we love barbecue turkey. If you're going to barbecue a turkey outside or you're going to fr fry anything, do it in the company of someone that you trust, um, a parent, guardian, or any relative that can help you with food safety. Be extremely careful. Let's take a look at some of these, uh, at one of these uh, frying videos. Be extremely careful when it comes to food safety. Let's take a look at this. Now, let's um, really concentrate. Oh, and by the way, before we um, get uh, again, to food safety, if you're going to peel uh, a carrot, if you're going to peel a potato or anything, um, use a safe peel peeler. It has a guard, um, as you can see here. Okay, and when you are storing leftovers, um, so get yourself a bag. Any brand will do, not mentioning brand. Well, you can see um, this is a Ziploc bag. Uh, they're not our sponsors, but this is just an example. Um, get yourself a bag that uh, opens and closes the right way. And you basically seal it tight, making sure there's no air pockets. As you can see here, and you usually can keep, if it's frozen, you can keep it three or four days or maybe more. Um, we, this is not a vacuum bag, but I do recommend it uh, to keep the air out. And um, don't keep leftovers more than three or four days. And also label what it is and, and so on and so forth. Um, so you kind of want to do that. Now, let's get to um, safety when it comes uh, to turkey. Um, so you can uh, go to www.cdc. This is the Centers for Disease Control. 
um, and prevention. Uh, you can, um, so on the website, it gives you different uh, sections. So let's take a look how to, um, let's start with um, turkey temperatures. Um, so to properly deal with um, turkey temperatures and how to prepare your holiday turkey safely, um, turkey and its juice can be contaminated with germs. Um, as I uh, pointed out with the um, containers, we need to safely do that. Uh, it can be contaminated with germs uh, and can make your family sick. Raw turkey can contain salmonella or other things. Um, other things we can't pronounce here. Um, but let's take a look at really quick what salmonella is because it gives the um, definition. Um, the CDC estimates salmonella bacteria causes 1.35 million infections, 26,500 hospitalizations, and 420 deaths in the United States each year. I'm going to repeat that again. Center for Disease Control estimates salmonella bacteria causes about 1.35 million infections, 26,500 hospitalizations, and 420 deaths in the United States each year. Food is the source of most illnesses. Most people who get ill from salmonella have diarrhea, fever, and stomach cramps. Symptoms usually begin six hours to six days of infection and at least four to seven days. Most people recover without specific treatment and should not take antibiotics. Antibiotics are typically used to treat people who have severe illness and who are at risk for it. Some people's illness may be so severe that they might have to get um, hospitalized. Okay, uh, so um, you can go to the website and look up this. So let's go back to um, Talking turkey. Okay, so how to cook turkey at a safe temperature. To roast a turkey in your oven, set the oven temperature at least 325 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're in another country, it's Celsius. Place the completely thawed turkey into a roasting pan that is two to two and a half inches deep um, click here for cooking times depending on the weight of the turkey and whether it's stuffed use a food thermometer to make sure your turkey has reached the internal temperature of 165 degrees check by it, it in, by in, inserting by inserting a food thermometer into three places according uh, to avoiding Avoiding the bone. The thickness, say this is the turkey, my hand. Um, the thickness, the breast, um, and the where, where the body and the uh, where the body and and the joint join, uh, aiming towards the thigh. Um, where body and wing join, aiming towards the wing. Uh, for more information, go to cdc.gov um, if you have a problem of me explaining this. Even though your turkey has a pop-up timer, you can still use a food thermometer to check that uh, your food is safety, safely cooked. If you have stuffed your turkey, insert 
<clears throat> a full thermometer into the center of, of it um, stuffing to ensure it reaches 165 degrees. I really do not recommend, because um, you can get sick putting raw stuffing into, um, into a turkey and it cooks and, you know, uh, and, and the bread is yucky and all kinds of things. Um, and if you can help it, I understand uh, we live in tough times and people can't afford stuff. Try not to use boxed stuffing. Um, it really doesn't taste good. If you can make your own stuffing, more power to you. Um, remember to let the turkey stand 20 minutes before removing all stuffing and carving the meat. This will let <clears throat> stuffing cook a little longer and make the turkey easier to carve. If you are cooking your turkey using another method, such as smoking or frying it, or if you are roasting a turkey that is not fully thawed, there are guidelines here. Click on the website and you can find them uh, for cooking your bird safely. Um, so, as you can see on your screen, there is a diagram here. Make sure your turkey reaches a safe internal temperature of um, 165 degrees. Use a food thermometer to check three places, avoiding bone, thickest part of the breast, and where the body and thigh join. Um, now, taking care of leftovers, like I had showed a bag here. Um, refrigerate leftovers at 40 degrees Celsius, I mean 40 degrees Fahrenheit, or colder within two hours of cooking to, to prevent food poisoning. Refrigerate leftovers that have been exposed um, to temperatures higher than 90 degrees, like in a hot car, within one hour. If you are refrigerating a big cut of meat, such as a turkey or roast, cut it into small pieces so that they cool quickly. You do not need to wait <clears throat> until the food is cool to store it in the refrigerator or freezer. Eat cooked, eat cooked turkey and dishes made with it, such as soup or in a casserole within three or four days. Freeze leftovers to store them for longer. Um, reheat all leftovers to at least 165 degrees before serving and eating. The bacteria, um, which is called uh, Clostrium perfringens, it's hard to pronounce, grows in cooked food left at room temperature. It's the second most common bacteria that will cause in food poisoning. Um, the major symptoms are vomiting and abdominal cramps within 6 to 24 hours after eating. Um, many of these outbreaks have been linked to foods commonly <clears throat> served during the holidays, such as turkey or roast beef. Uh, for more information and safety tips, you can go... Um, www.cdc.gov forward slash food safety. Um, and we want to be extremely um, careful when it comes to stuff. So let's, let me go here. Oh, um, if you would like more information on... Um, there's a poultry hotline and safety hotline. You can go to the USDA Meat and Poultry Hotline at one eight 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 MP Hot. Uh, that's one eight 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 six seven four six eight five four in English. One triple eight six seven four six eight 
five four. And if you need to, let's go here. Uh, this is extremely important, and for the rest of the show, we're going to talk about food poisoning. Um, serious health problems and long-term effects from food poisoning can also be found at cdc.gov forward slash food safety. Um, most people who have mild illness, and but infections spread by food and serious or even life-threatening. Some people may need to be hospitalized, and some illnesses lead to other health problems, including meningitis, kidney damage, uh, memo, uh, a, a syndrome, uh, or HUS, arthritis, brain and nerve damage. Um, for some people, these health problems can last weeks, months, or even recovering from foodborne illness. For others, um, they never go away. How soon do symptoms start? Uh, usually 30 minutes to 8 hours. Uh, the symptoms can include nausea, vomiting, stomach cramps, and diarrhea. Uh, it can, within, also within 24 hours, watery diarrhea, nausea, stomach cramps, vomiting, um, fever, and chills. 6 to 24 hours, diarrhea, stomach cramps that last for more than 24 hours, vomiting, and fever that are not common. Six hours to six days can include uh, diarrhea that can be bloody, uh, fever and stomach cramps, or vomiting. 12 to 48 hours is diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, stomach pain, uh, fever, headache, or what they call no, uh, a norovirus, which is body aches that are also possible. 18 to 36 hours, difficulty swallowing, muscle weakness, um, double or blurred vision, drooping eyelids, uh, slurred speech, and difficulty moving um, eyes, sim uh, symptoms that start in the head and move down as the illness gets worse. Two to five days is diarrhea, often bloody, uh, fever and stomach cramps. Um, three to four days is long-term effects around five to ten percent of people diagnosed with E. coli develop a life-threatening um, health problem called, um, I can't pronounce it, watery diarrhea, loss of appetite, weight, um, weight loss, stomach cramps, bloating, increased gas, nausea, and fatigue. Uh, fever and flu-like symptoms such as muscle aches and fatigue, headache, stiff neck, confusion, loss of balance, and <coughs> seizures. Um, um, people that are pregnant, infections during pregnancy, can lead to miscarriage or a stillbirth, um, premature delivery, or life-threatening infections of the newborn. If you um, suffer from food poisoning or have a real serious problem during the holidays, do not hesitate to call 911 and call your local um, ambulance service to get help. Um, if you have a fever or feel more tired and achy than usual, please call 911. Um, now, um, there's more information here. It's very important. Um, uh, according to the CDC website, uh, there are people with disabilities that are at, or are, are at risk. They are at risk, uh, increased risk for food poisoning. Age 65 or older, 
for people age for people age 65 or older, their immune systems and organs don't recognize and get rid of harmful germs as well as they once did. This increases the chance of getting sick from food poisoning. From for people nearly um, age 65 or older that have a lab-confirmed foodborne illness and salmonella, listeria, E. coli, etc. Younger than five years of age, young ch children that are are that are younger than five years of age. Um, Immune systems are still developing, so their bodies are fighting germs and silk sickness aren't as strong. Uh, food poisoning can be particularly dangerous for them uh, because it can lead to diarrhea and dehydration. Uh, children younger than, uh, than five are three times more likely to be hospitalized than are um, salmonella infections. Kidney failure is one to one uh, one out of uh, seven um, years of age five. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Kidney failure strikes one in seven children under age five who are diagnosed with E. coli and uh, 0157 infection, um, which is, a, uh, and if you have weakened immune systems, um, you also have to be careful. Having a weakened immune system can make it harder to fight germs and sickness effectively. Weakened immune systems are due to diabetes, liver disease, and kidney disease, alcoholism, HIV, immune uh, disorders such as lupus or receiving chemotherapy or radiation therapy. For example, people who are, who are on dialysis are 50 times more likely to get a listeria infection. To learn about what foods are safer for those with weakened immune systems, you can click here at www. Um, cdc gov. That's the uh, 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 Center for D for Disease Control. If you are pregnant, uh, you can you are most likely um, than most people to get sick from certain germs. For example, pregnant women are ten times more likely to get a listeria, a listeria infection. Uh, again, for today's show. For more information, you can go to www.cdc.gov. And um, I just want to go over this one more time for those that um, remember, do not put all your food in at once in one um, situation uh, in one bowl. It's not good. Okay? And then, for, for safety purposes, it is much better to separate your food in something like this. Two dividers, and uh, we also need to make sure it is safe. Do not put something like this long in the microwave for like 12 minutes or something. It will burn, it will melt. Um, you don't, you don't want to do that. And... Um, I'm going to demonstrate something. I don't have a knife here, but if the knife was sharp, uh, you you want to, if you're giving somebody a, a, a meat knife to cut their food, put it down. Don't put it up because you will cut somebody or hurt them um, extremely bad if, you, uh, if you're not putting it down like that. Okay, so um, food safety in the kitchen, food safety all over when it comes to uh, food safety and people with disabilities. Um, this has put an end to this 
2023 edition of Able to Cook. I'm Lauren Seiler. Arlene is not here today. Um, see you next time on the never uh, on the next edition of. Uh, see you next time on the next edition of Able to Cook, the only program in Vermont and, and beyond who that teaches food safety uh, to people with many abilities despite their disabilities. See you next time. I'm Lauren Seiler.